Good morning, scholars of Earth and Environmental Science. Today, we'll be discussing a few different environmental issues stemming from human activities in North Carolina. We'll first explore the impacts of urban land use, then learn about the hog industry, then finish with a discussion of mining. Since the late 1950s, American land development has extended the range of the built-up environment out further into the countryside. Previously, fertile farmland and wetlands are converted into housing and commercial buildings on the edges of cities. This trend is called urban sprawl, or suburbanization. You're very familiar with what this looks like. Subdivision neighborhoods filled with single-family homes, strip malls and office parks, lots of highways and parking lots. In the past, people used to live close to their jobs and walk to work, but suburbs implement single sorry, but suburbs implement single use planning where each area is zoned for only one use. So jobs and houses are a great distance apart. Because everything is so spread out and little public transit is provided, people have to commute to work by car. So why might this be a problem? There are numerous environmental impacts for one. Because of more roads, there's increased runoff since the water can't make it through the hard surfaces. This limits the recharge of aquifers since the water can't percolate down. In addition, building large areas uh, fragments and destroys nearby native habitats. In order to grow lawns in these subdivisions, there's increased water demand, which puts a strain on limited water resources, particularly out west in the desert. In addition, more cars means more air pollution from the exhaust and water pollution due to gasoline, motor oil, things like that leaking out of the cars. And as we'll talk about in a moment, suburbanization also extends out the effect of a heat island from a city. In addition, there are numerous effects of suburbanization on human society and health. There's an increase in obesity and hypertension since people aren't walking around quite as much. There's more deaths and injuries due to more car accidents since there's more cars on the road. Because development is more spread out, this increases the cost for providing basic infrastructure, power, water, garbage, things like that. And as we can see in the graph here, lowering density also increases the transportation costs in that people need to use more gas in order to get to places. We can see a big difference between Houston and Hong Kong, in that Houston is very low density and requires a lot of gasoline to get around. In large cities like Atlanta or Los Angeles, and Raleigh to some extent, there's a pronounced local warming effect called a heat island. Cities have more pavement and less green spaces compared to rural areas. This is a double whammy. Not only does the pavement absorb more heat, but there is less vegetation present to cool it down via transpiration. In addition, the multitude of cars spewing hot exhaust gases also contribute to a warming effect. On average, cities are about 1.8 to 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit hotter due to the heat island effect, although it could be hotter in certain times of the day or over summer. Heat is not only uncomfortable to live in, but can cause stress over time and potentially acute heat stroke. Heat is no joke. It kills about a thousand Americans every year. To mitigate the impact of heat islands, we need to build more green spaces within cities. This could be done by adding trees to the roads, plants to ceilings, and building more parks around. In addition, cities should limit the amount of cars allowed within their borders. Through mechanisms like a congestion tax, carpool mandates, or limiting road access. Pavement could also be painted and sided with reflective glass to limit the amount of radiation absorbed. In addition, constructing more public transit, like trains and subways and trams, will also be able to provide people an alternative to cars that's a bit cleaner. 
North Carolina is well known for its pork. After Iowa, we're the second largest pork producing state. The industry is worth about $2 billion, with at least 9 million pigs in the state. They are mostly concentrated in the southeastern part of our state, which is flood and hurricane prone. With the, with the decreasing demand for tobacco, farmers switched to raising more pork. And while hog population exploded during the 1990s, the number of farms decreased. Increasingly, pigs were concentrated in these large industrial farms managed by large corporations like Smithfield or Tyson. These are often called concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs. Lenient environmental regulations and zoning exemptions passed by the North Carolina General Assembly enabled this, scan, this scale up. In addition to controlling a lot of the hog production, firms like Smithfield and Tyson are vertically integrated and also own the plants which process the pigs into pork. All these hogs produce a lot of waste. Under the lax regulations of the early 90s, the waste was managed in lagoons. The waste is left here to decompose and then sprayed into fields. The pink color comes from the bacteria responsible for the decomposition. There are several environmental and social problems stemming from industrial hog production in general and lagoons in particular. The waste contains disease-causing bacteria like E. coli. Their stench is horrible and creates worse health outcomes for people living nearby. And unfortunately, these impacts disproportionately affect Native Americans, Black people, and Latinos who live close to the farms. And because these farms decrease nearby home prices, it's very difficult for these people to move away. The waste can contaminate the local ecosystem if it happens to get out of the lagoon. Floods created by hurricanes, which hit our coast, can cause the waste to spill over the top of the lagoon barriers. For example, Hurricane Florence in 2018 caused 50 of these lagoons to overflow, releasing millions of gallons of hog waste, resulting in the deaths of millions of fish downstream. Thankfully, in 1997, a moratorium was placed on the construction of new large hog farms, limiting the construction of new lagoons, although the old ones are still around. While more responsible methods are being developed, the large corporations have been hesitant to implement these due to, due to the costs involved. North Carolina has a mining industry to dig out useful minerals from the lithosphere. Today, our state mines lithium, phosphate, clay, gems, olivine, and a host of other materials. We used to produce coal, but all of those mines were closed by the 50s. Minerals valuable and economical enough to extract are called ores. For example, the ore hematite contains iron, although there's other materials in the rock which must be removed first to extract the useful mineral within the ore. Many mining techniques have been developed over the years, but they boil down into two categories, surface and subsurface. Surface mining is used when the deposits are close to the surface. Open pit mines and quarries are such examples. Essentially, they're big holes in the ground. Subsurface mining occurs, you guessed it, below the surface. Deep shafts are dug down into the ground, then machines and people are brought down to the mine to to mine out the resource. Reclamation is the process of returning land to a condition at least as good as that prior to mining. And while the minerals dug out of the ground might be useful, mines cause a whole load of economic problems, or sorry, environmental problems. Removing the ore and overburden in surface mines releases dust into the air, and there's a lot of noise created by the equipment and use of explosives. Water, which seeps into mines, can pick up contaminants like arsenic. Or, in the case of coal, which contains a lot of sulfur, the water and oxygen in the air can react with it to form sulfuric acid. This pollution could make its way into nearby watersheds, harming aquatic life. 
In surface mines, removing the soil displaces the local ecosystem. And when that soil is put back on top at the end of mining operations, special care must be taken to make sure that the layers are restored to their proper locations. Otherwise, the top may not be as fertile as it once was. And sulfur-containing materials could have acidified the soil, making it more difficult to grow plants there. The excess rock that's pulled out of the mine can also be eroded into nearby streams, choking the life there with sediment. Land above an abandoned mine could also subside, which means it collapses and destroys property on the surface. And in mining coal, a particularly scary and hazardous impact are fires. Errant sparks can light whole seams on fire. These are difficult to put out and may burn for a long time, sometimes for decades. These fires release tons of carbon dioxide and other toxic gases, like vaporized mercury, into the air. Thousands of miners have died in coal fire accidents. So these were a few miscellaneous environmental issues which impact us North Carolinians. Next time, we'll be discussing our preeminent environmental problem that the world faces today, global global warming, also known as climate change. So until then, have a good day.